Here's another useful tool that I sometimes use. This is the impedance tester by Craig Anderton found in his book called Do-It-Yourself Projects for Guitarists. I bought this, I don't know, 10, 10, 12, I don't even know how many, 13 or 14 years ago, something like that. Anyways, this is um, project number 28 in the book and explains testing it, what it is, why you should test for it, and he gives a simple little schematic, right? So you send a signal in to your box from a signal generator, and you have these three test points, and it goes through a one meg ohm variable resistor, and then you output this into the input of the device you're going to test, and then there's a sequence here, so you know, set the multimeter to AC, you want to get a signal of 1 to 2 volts, and then you set your uh, pot to 0 ohms, and then you measure between test points 1 and 2, and then you, you rotate the pot until the meter reads 50% of what it did in step 3, and then you unplug your probes and measure the resistance between points one and three and that will be approximately your input resistance. So over here I have it set up and so I have my box set up with the multimeter probes into test points one and two I get the multimeter set to AC. I'm going to test the input impedance of this Red Llama clone that I built a number of years ago now, and then that's going to go into my little mini amp that I did a video on earlier. So we're going to turn on our our function generator, get a signal going, turn that on so we can hear it. And so then over here, we're going to get a voltage of, oh, let's go with 1.5. All right, so then we're going to turn our knob here until we get half of that voltage, which would be, I probably could have picked a better number and one and a half volts because this isn't going to divide evenly. My multimeter is not sensitive enough to go down to 10 volts AC. It's 200. But anyways, so we're at 0.8 volts and we'll go ahead and disconnect the signal and then we'll change our multimeter to Measure resistance, we'll unplug number two and put it into number three over here. And as you can see here, this says that the input impedance is approximately 137K. Um, now I did this a little bit earlier before I started the video, just to go over this, and uh, I set it to one volt and uh, measured about 147, I think it was. So we can say that the input impedance of this pedal is approximately 150K. Now in Craig's book over here, he, he says that if you have anything less than 100K, you should consider putting a buffer in. Um, I'm actually, I've never tested this. I'm actually a little surprised that this is only 150K. <laughs> but you know I don't hear well okay it doesn't really matter if if you have true bypass it doesn't really matter but if, if you have say a wah pedal that's a real tone sucker and uh, you want to just see just how bad it is and why you should true bypass and measure the input impedance on that it's probably way less than 100k and you know it's a real good justification to put an input buffer into a pedal like that. 
But anyways, this is a, a real simple little device to make. Um, once again, this is something you can make in like a half hour. This is another um, Radio Shack plastic enclosure. It's like three by two by one inch and uh, just simply as a couple of mono jacks and a one mega ohm pot and three scope probes and a little bit of sanding down the enclosure and putting labels on it and the instructions on the back and it's a handy little tool to have. It's another one of those things that I don't use often but when I need it it's it's really nice to be able to just plug stuff into it and measure things. So that's Craig Anderton's impedance tester. You might want to think about building one if you do a lot of guitar effect stuff.